Hello, hello, hello. My name is Adora and you're welcome to Dora Zoom. Okay, um, today I'll be talking about a very, very um, sensitive but a very important topic. What I mean sensitive, sensitive in the sense that um, a lot of people, especially the men, do not really like to talk about this because um, it will, it, it kind of, it bruises their ego to speak on issues like this and then um, secondly it's it sounds unbelievable when they even talk about it you know they feel people don't believe them when they say it or they feel people will not be on their side or they feel um the public sentiment and all that is going to be on the opposite sex which is on the women as usual so they kind of shy away from it and they just bottle it up inside them while they suffer in silence now it's about domestic violence against the men yes if you wonder if it's possible for a man to suffer domestic violence, then my answer is a big yes. A lot of men actually go through domestic violence. A lot of men actually suffer in the hands of women. But like I said, it's very hard to believe eh? because you always expect that when you hear domestic violence, it's always against the woman. It's always against, you know, what the man does to a woman. It's always against the, the woman's feelings. It's, it's, it's usually about the women. It's usually about the women, women, women. So there is this um, kind of um, belief that a man is made or built to be strong so he cannot be affected emotionally psychologically mentally and that a man is just kind of built to take in absorb anything that comes his way good or bad but i tell you it's not always that easy because some men go through this domestic violence in the hands of women some men go through abuse of different not, not just domestic violence but abuse of different different kinds now if you must know there are different types of abuse they have financial abuse they have sexual abuse they have physical abuse they have mental abuse they have all manner of abuses and just the way a woman goes through most of these you know circumstances is the same way a man goes through men are still human they have blood running through their veins. So because they are men does not mean that they are kind of one super creature like that. A lot of them actually face what we women face. They encounter the same, you know, most kind of stress that we women encounter when it comes to abuse, when it comes to something that has to affect them mentally, that has to affect them physically in all, in all shapes and sizes. But because... So many men feel that when they tell you that they are physically abused or sexually abused or mentally or financially abused, they believe that when they speak out, people would, you no know, people tend not to take them serious because they're like, you're a man, suck it in for goodness sake, you're a man, take it in, just take it like that and all that. But it's not as easy as we think. So why, why, why I'm bringing up this topic is because here, especially in the Western world, I've seen a lot of cases where the women, the women, use this against their men a lot and it's actually not good like recently i came across this story on you know, on the internet about a lady that called the police for her husband what went wrong okay now the man discovered they okay what happened is that they were actually married for about five years and then um the man lost his job during this covid thing you know, the lockdown that was last year so he lost his job and then he was at home for about two weeks just two weeks so now while he was at home the woman started nagging and complaining like oh you just all you do is just lie down and eat and sleep and lie down and eat and sleep aren't you thinking of getting something else to do and all that and the man was like it's just two weeks so it's not even up to a month that i lost my job wouldn't you at least give me some time to pick up myself and get something else doing that right now as it is i'm not just lying down and sleeping for nothing i'm actually trying to get a job i'm actually i'm actually sending out my CVs. i'm actually talking to people out there so it's not like he was just lying down and doing nothing but you know the woman for some reason is just couldn't wait she was really very impatient and she wanted the man to go out there and get something doing so at last the man was um, able to get a job now this job he got he actually took it not because he really liked the job not because he wanted it but because he just wanted to get away from the house just because he was tired of the complaining he was tired of 
you know, the woman making him feel like he's useless, he's lazy, he's up to no good, all he does is sleep and eat at home. So he just took this job anyway. So on one of these days, he went to work and he finished from work and decided to go to and there's an African shop very close to where he works. Decided to go to the African shop to buy some meat and fish, you know, for to cook at home. So he got in there, bought these things. And because he 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 got there, you know, he or he met some other people in, um, in the shop. They were in a queue, and at this time, during this lockdown restriction thing, all we had to do here was queue for everything. You go to the shops, you want to buy just something as tiny as a bottle of milk. You have to queue. You know, you have to stay stand like two meters apart from people and all that. So because all these restrictions and things were in place, this man had to queue. And this kind of wasted his time. So by the time he got home, Madame was shouting already, screaming, you're supposed to finish work at six. Why are you coming back at eight? And all that. And the man was trying to explain and, you know, see the meat I went to buy. That was what took me, you know, kept me out there and all that. And he was trying to like, you know, show the woman. He was stretching the bag of meat towards the woman. See, see the meat I bought. See the meat? And the woman grabbed this nylon bag from him and threw it on the floor like the whole meat and fish and everything she threw it on the floor and the man was like what are you doing and that was it the woman started shouting at him and before we knew what was happening they were shouting at each other and now the man actually knew that see if i'm not very careful with this woman she's going to put me in trouble because from the look of things it was like she was there was something there was something brewing somewhere but the man wasn't too sure because he he just stuck, he was like okay for some time now this woman all she does is complain all she does is nag all she does is complain about everything he does that nothing he does ever seems to sound right or look good before the woman and then this one now they are now dragging meat and throwing meat on the floor and all that so he just knew well let me just give this woman her space so he left the woman in the kitchen and went into his room to get changed and the woman came with came you know after him and was shouting and was shouting at him and talking to him and raining abuses on him and he she just wanted this man to reply you know from all she was doing it's like she was actually setting a trap for this man to respond but this man cleverly avoided her so when he went to the bathroom to have his bath she followed him into the bathroom and was still raining abuses and all that he ignored her had his bath changed to his pajamas and went to bed and the next thing this woman did was to pull the blanket and threw it into the washing machine and start washing it. It was not as if the blanket needed washing, but just to stress this man. She was actually trying to push this man to the wall to see how he was going to react. And at a point, this man had no choice. He was getting too angry. You know, he had to like react. He shouted back at this woman and then from one thing led to the other. This woman actually hit him and he hit her back. And that was it. And that was all she wanted. That was all she needed to pin this man that he laid his hands on her. So now when the police got involved, of course, she invited the police because that's what a lot of women actually do. They're very, very fast to pick up their phone and call 911. She invited the police and she started complaining, talking, you know, laying her complaints to the policemen. And, and then the man said, listen. She was the one who actually hit me first. Look at how it started. And he said, giving his own version of the story. And after all investigations, they discovered that it was actually the woman that even hit the man first. You know, so they cautioned the woman and settled them. And that was it. But you know what? If it were the man that hit this woman first, that would have been a problem for this man. They wouldn't just caution him. They might not have just cautioned him and let him go. Who knows, it might have you know, dragged on, they might have stretched this case for as long as possible. He might even have been jailed. So this is what a lot of men go through in the hands of women. It's just that some men, they, a lot of men don't even know how to say it out. They don't know how to open their mouth and say, ah, that my woman keeps beating me. That my woman is very physical with me at home. That my woman abuses me, she insults me, she causes the daylight out of me. They are ashamed to say it because it bruises their ego. It makes them feel like, oh, you are not even man enough to handle your home. Oh, how do you, how can you explain that your woman is doing this to you and all you do is come out here to complain? So they try to take it in, which is very bad. Because at the end of the day, you take in a lot of this toxic attitude. It's affecting you. 
it's affecting your mental your capability is affecting your your your, your is affecting your health is affecting everything about you you can't think properly you can't reason well you can't put yourself together you can't rest well most of the time you see a lot of men running out there you see a lot of men running out they finish from work and they go to one power one bar or go to one joint or one eatery just to sit down and relax and then take it all in they all know all what they have gone through in the day not because they don't have a home to retire to not because they don't have a house to go back and lie down on their bed and dress but because they are actually scared of going back to the same house where a woman will torture them and you know torment them and then they won't even still have that same rest a lot of men are going through this but I like to, I would like to, to please appeal with our sisters. There are lots of our black brothers in jail. A lot of these men are in jail not because they actually did anything seriously terrible, but because the women have, in one way or the other, put them there. Some men are in jail for as, you know, as little as. Okay, there's nothing that I won't say lead to, but something led to something. Now, if you find a man you are not very, very happy with, I would advise you just leave that man. If you think you're in a relationship with a man, you don't like him anymore, you've fallen out of love with him, um, you think you're no longer compatible, you think, you know, it's... The butterflies you were feeling in the initial stage of the relationship is no longer there. You just think the whole spirit of the relationship and the love is dead. Please, do yourself a favor by walking out of that relationship. Do yourself a favor by leaving that man alone. Walk out, leave him. Let him be. Let him carry his wahala, if that is what you call it. So if that is what you think he is he's dishing you. Let him go with his stress. While you walk away, walk away, or well, you know, walk into your, your new chapter of peace. Walk into your new chapter of joy. Your new chapter of whatever it is you wish for yourself out there. But do not, please do not cause a man to go to jail for nothing. It's not worth it. I see, or rather, I hear some women openly brag about how they will deal with the man, about how they will, they will, they will, they will make sure the man rots in jail. They brag about how they will make sure the man sleeps in prison. He rots there, he dies there, he never sees the light of day again. They openly brag about how they will make sure the man will suffer. And sometimes I wonder, if you have fallen out of love with somebody, the best thing you can do for yourself as well is move on. Move on because the more you are holding on to that person in your heart, the more hatred you are having onto that person, it's still affecting you in one way or the other because you are just there thinking about you know, what next do I do to make this guy suffer? What next do I do to make this guy pay for what he's done? What next do I do to make this guy shed tears? I must make sure I deal with him. I must make sure he will, he will regret ever knowing me. While you are making sure you do all these things to him, other people are, are thinking of creative ideas they could do to make money. People are thinking of creative ideas they could do to, make, to, to keep the world going. Your mates are thinking of new technologies that we put in place that will bring up something that the world would accept. And then they'll be known for it. They'll be, they'll be rich for it, popular for it. And you are sitting down there thinking of how to make somebody suffer. Thinking of how to make somebody rot in jail. Thinking of how to make somebody die. Like, why don't you use that time to do something more creative for yourself? So please, when it comes to you know, this abuse, domestic abuse and all manner of abuse towards the men, let us also be very sensitive. Because it's not just the women that are going through this thing. A lot of men are suffering silently especially here abroad, because they believe that the law stands with the woman, that the law will always be by the woman's side. So some men, even when they have every proof, you know, every evidence that I'm not the one at fault, so she's the one doing this thing to me, they still keep those evidence because they, 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 they think they will not be believed. They think nobody will listen to them. 
they think that at the end of the day, it is the woman that will still, you know, the, the, um, they will still give attention to. It's the woman that will still be praised for it. They believe the woman will still, you know, be believed that her story will be taken and not his. So please, I appeal to the ladies, especially if you have sons, if you have sons, if you have brothers, put yourself in their shoes. Put your son or your brother in the shoes of that man you want to disgrace, you want to destroy, that man you want to send to jail for the rest of his life. Because sometimes we do these things, you know, just to make ourselves feel good. Yeah, I dealt with him. I did, I did this to him. I destroyed him. If you see what I did to him, eh? when, when he comes to, when he sees me again, he will run away. But is that all? Is it just for your own personal ego? Is it just to boost your own pride and arrogance and make yourself feel good while you are destroying someone else's life? While you are destroying someone else's child? How do you think the parent of that child, of that man is going to feel to know that you, the woman, put that man in the position where he is? Now, I'm not in defense of men that are domestically violent to women. I am not in defense of it. I'm not defending those men. Of course, if a man, you know, abuses you sexually, financially or whatever, if you go through any of those kind of abuse in the hand of a man, you have the right to report to the law. You have the right to take it up. You have every right to speak out. But just as the woman is having every right to speak out, I also believe a man has every right to speak out. It's, it, should, it should be equal. It should be an equal opportunity for everybody. Nobody has monopoly over violence. Nobody has monopoly over, you know, abuse. So if you can give it, be ready to take it. If you can make someone else suffer, if they do the same thing to you, don't complain. So if you can report to the law or to the authority or you can report to anybody because you feel you have been abused by a man, I'm talking about the woman this time, then the men should also, they should learn how to start speaking out. I think the men should also start speaking out because it's actually not fair. You know, a lot of people are beginning to think that, oh, the men are demons. The men are demons. The men are demons. It's always about the man. It's always about the man. That's why in most cases, when you hear story about domestic violence, by the time you see, when you see this, the headline, domestic violence, all your mind tells you is, is a woman that is involved. The woman was affected. The woman is the victim. The woman is the victim. Then in some cases, when you hear that it is the man that is the victim, you're like, eh? So men go through this thing. Yeah, of course, a lot of men go through it. So that's why my appeal is you know, to the ladies out there. If you know, if you know you have in one way or the other been affected by a man you know, domestically harassing you or abusing you or whatever in different ways, speak out. But as you're speaking out, bear it in mind that the man also has the right to speak out. Bear it in mind that the man is not a superman. If he feels hurt, if he feels pain, if he feels you have violated on his right as a human being, he has the right to voice out. So don't feel bad when men start taking their stand in speaking out against domestic violence, against abuse of any kind. Don't feel, uh, but you're supposed to be a man. Why don't you just take it? Oh, you're not man enough. And Because that is what a lot of us say when a man is going through all this pain. We say they are not man enough. We keep saying a man is not man enough until he dies. He dies in shame. He takes that his man. He swallows that I'm a man. I will suck it in. And they die for nothing. So enough of this whole domestic violence thing on both sides. Just stop it. Because what is good, good for the goose is also good for the gander. So if you're a woman and you think that when you abuse a man, you have the right to report. You have the right to call 911. By the time... By the time the man calls, by the time the man makes a report, please don't feel he's superhuman. Don't feel he's one angel that should just uh -uh, take it as it is. Because it's not good for anybody. It's not good for any of the parties involved. We're all human. We should have human sympathy for everyone as well as conscience. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. Thank you and see you next time.